So 1.1 was all about displaying categorical data. What were the two graphs that we used to display categorical data? Bar graphs and pie graphs. Very good. We are now transitioning to displaying quantitative data. So this is our first graph. Do you guys know what this graph is called? It's a dot plot. Brian and Jessica have decided to move and they are considering seven different cities. The graphs below show the daily high temperature in June, July, and August for each of these cities. We're gonna help them pick a city by answering some questions. First of all, you guys already told me these are dot plots. These are dot plots. Now, just so you guys know, these are called parallel dot plots. Why do you think they're called parallel dot plots? They don't intersect. Yeah, they don't intersect. They are parallel. They're stacked on top of each other. But when you guys see something is called parallel something, that means it shares an axis, usually the x-axis. So parallel dot plots because they share an x-axis. All right. So I told you guys that these are the graphs of daily high temperatures in seven different cities. So what does each individual dot represent? A city. Nope. A day. A temperature. A single day's daily high temperature. Okay. Each dot represents a single day's. Great. A single day's daily high temperature. Hang on. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah. A single day's daily high temp. All right, guys, we're going to look at, here we go. We're going to look at cities A, B, and C. These are the top three cities right here. We're going to look at those first. Looking at cities A, B, and C, what do you guys notice about the pattern of the dots? It's the same. It's literally the same. Do you guys think this data was made up? Yeah. Uh, probably. So, the pattern is the same, but what is different about cities A, B, and C? Yeah, there are different like locations on the x-axis, right? So like which of the cities is the coldest? B. B. On average, that one is the coldest. Which one is the hottest? A. A, very good. So when we look at these, we can see... Shh, shh, when we look at these, we can see that they are centered at different values. They are centered at different values. They are centered at different values. All right. Now we are going to look at C versus D. Do you guys think, shh, 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 shh. do you guys think that C and D are centered at different average temperatures? Yes. You think that they're, Okay, so like if I kind of look at where their uh, kind of average, their kind of middle is ish, aren't they like pretty close? Okay, they're pretty close. So their centers are pretty close. So what is the difference between the two? There's a wider range. Beautiful. On which one? Which on which one? Oh, uh, on D. D. D has a wider range, but uh, we're actually going to change that word to a wider spread. All right. So D has more spread. D has more spread. We can also call that variability. So like in D, I need to have more options of clothing, right? Because I'm going to have a big swing between highs and lows. Um, in C, they're all pretty close to that average, that middle. All right. Next, we're going to look at D and E. We're going to look at D and E. 
Do you guys think that D and E are centered about the same? Yes. Yeah. Do they have the same spread? No. no. Ah, they start and end at the same high and low. So they're actually, they actually do have the same range or the same spread. Now, within that spread, there is some differences in how varied the temperatures are within that spread. But they do have the same, like, range, okay? So what is different? What do you guys think those values would be called? Outliers. Very good. E has outliers. E has outliers. That's the biggest difference between these two graphs. All right, our last comparison is going to be graph C and then F and G. Graph C and then F and G. Now look, this is probably gonna be a little bit, you might not believe me at first, but they are centered about the same. Here's why. If I look at the center, like think about balancing those graphs, right? On like one of those little science fulcrums. If I were to balance this graph, it would be like probably right about here. You, you agree? Ish. If I tried to balance graph F and I tried to put it right here, what's going to happen? Oh, crap. If I tried to put it right here, what's going to happen? Uh, it's it's going to fall down like that, right? So the center of this graph would actually be a little closer to this side over here in order for it to balance. That balance point is where the mean of the distribution is found, okay? Same thing on that bottom one there. The balance point would probably be somewhere around here-ish. And so those centers are all pretty close. Okay, so we have them all have the same center. They have about the same spread. None of them have outliers, but their shapes are different. Their shapes are different, okay? All right, so what you guys have just seen here are the four characteristics of a quantitative graph that we need to describe anytime we need to describe the distribution. We need to talk about the center, we need to talk about how spread out the data is, we need to identify any outliers, and we need to talk about the shape, okay? So let's make note of that here. This is what we're gonna do when we are asked to describe the distribution. When we are asked to describe the distribution of quantitative variables, we are gonna talk about the shape. We wanna notate if it is symmetric or skewed, and if it has, uh, you know, how many peaks? If it has uh, one or two peaks, we wanna describe the shape by talking about those attributes. We also are going to want to talk about any outliers that are present. Now, what is an outlier? What is it, Sean? It's a point that doesn't follow the trend. Yeah, so it's basically a value in the data that is unusually high or low, okay? So it is an unusual, unusually, high or low value. It's an unusually high or low value. Now for now, we're just gonna kind of visually see that like we did on that, that graph. Next week, I'll show you guys how to mathematically find an outlier, okay? 
So we're also going to want to talk about the center. Now, back in elementary and middle school, you guys talked about some ways to look at the center of some data. You talked about the mean. You guys know how to find the mean? Add them all up and divide by the number of numbers. Perfect. The other way you can find the center is the median. Do you guys remember how to find median? You put them all in order, you blah, 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 boom, there's the median, right? Now, there was a third M word. What is it? Mode. mode. What is mode? It's, it's like the, the most it's percentage. It's you add all of them up and then divide. That's mean. Very good. Mode is the value that occurs the most in the data. Now, I'm going to give you guys a hint. If the value occurs the most, you're going to see a peak where the mode is located because you have a lot of data stacked up there. So the mode is going to be where your peak is going to be at. All right, we're also going to want to talk about the spread, as we just said. The spread or the variability. There are tons of ways to talk about spread. One of which is the range. Do you guys know how to calculate the range? Maybe once. You know how to find the range, don't you? You take the highest minus the lowest. Okay. But, time out. That is maybe not as helpful for statistics. Because one, two, three, four, five has a range of four, but so does 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. That also has a range of four. But aren't those very different sets of numbers? Yes. One is way down at one, two, three, four, five. One is up at the hundreds, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. So we prefer in stats to actually list the low to the high value. We like to actually list the numbers. So instead of saying the range is four, we would say the spread is one to five, or the spread is 101 to 105. That way we know where it's located, and then we can quickly get the range if we need it, but that's what we prefer. I am not telling you you will never find range. You will find range this year, but this is just kind of our preference. So ladies and gentlemen, every time you are asked to describe the distribution of a quantitative variable, you need to do all four of these things. How in the world are you supposed to remember to describe the shape, the outliers, the center, and the spread? Socks. Socks. Shape, outlier, center, spread. Shape outlier center spread shape outlier center spread shape outlier center spread shape outlier center spread so in order to describe the shape you need some descriptors right symmetric what do you guys think a symmetric distribution is going to look like the same on each side, right? So uh, is that symmetric? Ish. <laughs> okay. Uh, but wait, is that symmetric? But wait, is that symmetric? Uh, but wait, is this symmetric? Ladies and gentlemen, is symmetric the most detailed descriptor? Not always, but it is one of the most commonly used descript descriptors for shape. Unimodal. What do you think unimodal means? One of what? One mode, which would mean it would have one peak. Okay? Unimodal means one peak. But wait, doesn't this first graph have one peak? It's unimodal. Isn't this unimodal? Yes. Is this unimodal? Yes. No. 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 Nope. This actually has no peaks. This. Is this unimodal? No. Ah, what is that one? That is bimodal. We all know what bi stands for, right? 
two. We'll stop there. Uh, two peaks, okay? Now, here's the problem. Not everything that is unimodal is symmetric. Here's some examples. That one is symmetric, but that one is not symmetric. That one is skewed. Bimodal. Two peaks could be symmetric. Or maybe it's not symmetric. Can't it be like a boom, 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 boom? It could, yeah. What would it be if it had three peaks? Trimodal. Trimodal, four peaks? Quadmodal. Quadmodal, five peaks? Pentamodal. Pentamodal. All right. Skewed left. Let's talk about skewed left. Here is a skewed left distribution. Skewed left. That is skewed left. Does that feel like it's backwards to you? Yes. Why? That's not correct. What does skewed mean? Skewed. Me. If I if I were to be like, uh, there, there. That data right there is a little skewed. It's a little off. It's a little different. It's a little weird. That person sitting over there is skewed. They're a little off, a little different, right? Where is the skewed data? On the left. The data that is a little bit different than the rest are over here on the left. Most of the data is over here on the right. Most of the data is over here on the right. But the skewed data is over here. Does that make sense? Ish. So what's the moral of this story? Your feet will help you on the test. <laughs> All right. What is that? What is that right there? What is that? What is that device? Are you blasting me for having a foot fetish? Good thing I don't. All right. I don't sell my feet pics, I swear. <laughs> All right. So skewed right, skewed left. Uniform. What does a uniform distribution look like? There's a uniform distribution. There is no peak. There is no anything. It's just boring uniform distribution. Okay? How you feel about sh uh, shape? <laughs> All right. I have a challenge for you. Please look at these graphs. <laughs> They're fun. All right. Look at these graphs. Everyone, right? All right. Don't say don't say it yet. Just kind of look at these and think about what shape they might be. Don't say them yet. Okay. I said don't say them, and she said, "Girl, I'm gonna knock her down." All right, guys. Top left. Top left. Approximately, what shape do you think this is? Bimodal. Bimodal. Unimodal. Yeah. Unimodal? Unimodal. Unimodal. All right, so some people think this is bimodal because of that. But that's you're, you're getting a little too detailed. When we talk about shape, we're kind of looking at the overall shape, like not too detailed, okay? So we would basically be like, yeah, that's approximately unimodal-ish, right? Uh, so that one would be unimodal. Is it approximately symmetric or is it skewed? Symmetric. Yeah, that one's fairly symmetric. It's really not skewed one way or the other. Okay. The next one, however. All right, look at top right. What do you guys see? Skewed. Which way? Do you guys see it? Do you see it? Do you see the foot? See your little toes? 
<laughs> what about this guy right here? Bimodal. Bimodal. Symmetric or skewed? Uh, skewed. Skewed a little bit. If it's skewed, which way? To the left. left. Very good. This would be a really ginormous toe, another toe. <laughs> And then we're missing toes here. Okay, all right. Over here. <laughs> what about this one? One big toe. We got a really big toe. Couple little guys here. But I can see, I can see. Oh, I didn't draw it. But since I know you want to see it. No. <laughs> uh, what the hell? Is this <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>